Hello. Hello, comrades. Welcome back to Scarborough, episode six. You got a stew going, baby. Uh, I call it You Got a Stew Going, Baby, because today we are going to be talking about something I love passionately, known as Arrested Development, and we're also going to be talking about something that I don't really love anymore, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, a.k.a., you know, The Chronicles of Narnia, and I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of the film, uh, which I think regardless of your opinion of uh, C.S. Lewis's um, uh, source material, uh, we can say now that it had problems. Um, uh, in other news, I, I, I do uh, like to start off, before we get into it, we can't just keep it uh, um, on topic. That would be off-brand for us. Um uh, I just did a really fun weekend with a comic that I love, uh, John Reap, and I, I was with my friend John Sheezer from here in Kansas City. I want to shout out John Reap. Uh, we're actually recording this on the day of the Super Bowl, and uh, after the Super Bowl, we have uh, um, John Reap appearing uh, for his debut on Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, right in the uh, second episode of the last season, which I have not caught up on but um you know uh we like larry david on this show we like john reap on this show he's very funny he was on eastbound and down and uh yeah we i just want to thank him for a good weekend and uh allowing me to show up to work high um very high uh which by the way not to brag but uh i didn't just stick to the script this weekend and i'm proud of myself for that i didn't uh you know, I didn't just tell my normal jokes. I did uh, a pretty long segment on um, uh, Jackson Mahomes last night on stage. And uh, I just want to document that for once I'm proud of myself. Um, so let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, something I love, something that I, has influenced me as a comic, uh, and something that I... Uh, Honestly, it's it's beyond influenced me as a comic. It's influenced who I am as a person, and that is Arrested Development. Um, Arrested Development uh, came out uh, much before I um, got a chance to watch it. I didn't grow up watching TV at all, really. Uh, I watched Veggie Tales and um, various other uh, Christian, you know, uh, conservative media. Uh, I listened to Rush Limbaugh with my parents growing up, and uh, there wasn't, it, it, I had no idea that Arrested Development existed when it did. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's interesting how pieces of media that, uh, you know, are not traditional, like most people found out about certain aspects of the Iraq War from watching the news or, or reading articles. Uh, but, um, I, uh, I started watching Arrested Development when I was in college and it, uh, I, I liked it on its surface. Uh, of course I, I knew that it was the funniest thing I had ever seen after watching a couple of episodes. I loved all of the callbacks and you, I mean, you talk about the art of the callback, um, Arrested Development, is a testament um, to when you have a good bit, you have to do several different versions of it you, in order to get the most out of it. If it's a good bit, it deserves to be repeated. Not to quote my man Andy Warhol, but images uh, uh, deserve repeating. I think I, I'm paraphrasing there, but. Um, yeah, uh, I found out about, um, you know, this. it's weird because this whimsical, uh, irreverent, uh, cheeky, clever comedy um, actually has, uh, especially in its uh, second and third season, some wonderful, like, grade-A uh, political satire. 
in it. And the whole show is full of like great class politics. Um, uh, and you know, when it comes to the war on I uh, war in Iraq, I mean, my God, um, you have George Bluth. Uh, the backstory is that he, uh, quote unquote, may have uh, committed some light treason uh, by developing houses for Saddam Hussein. That's hilarious in and of itself. Um, there's also this this part in Arrested Development uh, where Tobias, David Cross's character, gets a cell phone and a he's a buffoon, of course, and he accidentally takes a picture of his nutsack and that photo gets leaked to the federal government and they they say that it's proof of WMDs. They think it's a picture of WMDs. Um, I mean, my God. Uh, there's also I, I'm 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 remembering now. There's a scene where uh, uh, Job Bluth is in. He's captured uh, in Iraq, and uh, someone asks, "Is is it an American prison or?" Uh, or I believe that Michael asks, "Is it an American prison or uh, an Iraqi prison?" Uh, and they say an American prison, and he says, oh, my God, we have to go save him. Um, God knows what they are doing to him right now, and um, that's a solid bit. Uh, lots of fun Iraq stuff in that show. Um, <clears throat> there's also just tons of little details. They'll write songs. I love I'm a sucker for when South Park does that as well. Um, you know, they'll write songs, uh, like the big yellow joint, um, that is just, it's a perfect satire of, uh, 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 you know, just ridiculous, like hippie pot smoking music. Um, <clears throat> lots of little Easter eggs, uh, in, in Arrested Development, uh, you know, um, lots of weird puns that just repeat themselves and get funnier every time. Uh, Buster's hand getting bitten off by a loose seal when his name, his mother's name is Lucille. Um, all sorts of just Freudian uh, humor involved with that. Um, now, here's where I really lose it, uh, as in. These are comedic moments um, in Arrested Development, the ones that involve side characters because it has the best side characters in the business. Um, a few iconic ones that, uh, and the one, we'll start with the one the episode is named after. You've got a stew going, baby. In Arrested Development, uh, they introduce Carl Weathers as a cameo, um, and he plays this, version of himself that is just obsessed with saving money um and doing it like a dirtbag that's the whole bit and he constantly is talking about uh, uh how it takes very little meat to get a stew going um and i find that to be the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life and i mean that literally the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life and I have many friends who are also into Arrested Development, and we always, I, I say, I say you got a stew going, baby, um, at least, I, I mean, I would say at least four times a day. Um, and it's a perfect statement uh, for whatever, you know, uh, if someone, if you're working behind a bar and someone uh, gives you a, a $5 tip, you know, it's like it's like thanks five dollars. I mean that's pretty good. You you buy a, a rotisserie chicken with that or something. Uh, throw it in a pot with some water, some veggies. You got a stew going, baby. You can you can just that was a clumsy example, but you can you know. I also there's a part where uh, Carl Weathers is talking to Tobias, and he says. Um, Tobias says something about his wife working at a restaurant, and Carl Weathers, like, the light bulb goes off in his head, and he says, whoa, 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 hold up. Your wife works at a restaurant? 
Did they get a shift meal or just half off on select menu items? And I I remember I had this roommate for a while and we like for a long time we would just we would say that in contexts where it like kind of made sense. We would just ham fist it into and we would do it sneakily. We would uh, uh, we called it shift mealing the one another. Jake Milnarik, by the way, shout out to Jake Milnarik, who runs a a very cool independent um, uh, banner business. He makes pennants, and it's called Payday Pennant. Um, give them a shout out. Uh, follow them on Instagram. He's made a lot of hilarious merch for like the. Um, uh, I think you should leave, which is the greatest sketch show of all time. Um, <clears throat> good shit. Anyways, yeah, we would say, uh, like, if, if I mentioned that there was a new restaurant on North Oak Traffic Way, he'd be like, hold up. Do they get a shift meal or just half off on select menu items? Cute little thing. <clears throat> um, so, we have Carl Weathers also... Uh, another one of my like all-time favorite comedic performances by Henry Winkler, uh, uh, Fonzie, aka Fonzie, uh, as the lawyer Barry Zuckercorn. Uh, a few of my favorite Barry moments, real quick. Uh, Barry is this lawyer for the family, and it he's like their uh, he's like Robert Duvall in uh the godfather where he they're his only client uh and he is the biggest buffoon in the world but the mom lucille uh thinks that he's great for some reason um and barry uh there's a part where he shows up in court late flustered or whatever just a mess and he sits down and he says all right and he looks at his client michael he says what's the plan uh there's another scene where um uh Barry um in court uh you know he I think it's the judge uh asks him to um present points on on whatever the ruling or something like some big document and he says I haven't read it yet you know he's just constantly um Barry Zuckercorn is constantly um, just indicating how incompetent he is, and it's it's so funny um, every time. Uh, there's another one where like Barry has his own lawsuit going up against uh, the LA Kings hockey team because of a hockey puck that hit him, and uh, he's wearing an eye patch for no fucking reason. Uh, I uh, love Barry. Um, there's another character, a uh, private investigator named Gene Parmesan. Um, and uh, if you're familiar with Gene Parmesan, he's this guy who uh, the mother, once again, swears by. She thinks that he's great, uh, and uh, um, but he's a private investigator who does not— um, He the only thing he's good at is being already nearby— whenever they need him. So you have Lucille Bluth calling up uh, Gene Parmesan, uh, asking him for his services, and she'll be on the phone with him, and there'll be a knock on the door, and Gene Parmesan is in a teddy bear costume. He's already there in disguise. Um, so good, so good. Uh, so those are kind of my top... Uh, uh, Arrested Development characters. Also, let's. I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't talk about uh, uh, what's his name, Ben Stiller. My God, he crushes in Arrested Development. He plays this magician named Tony Wonder, um, and uh, I love all the the uh, magician hate that you get in um, Arrested Development too. It, they are just they absolutely take the profession of magician and um, just portray it as it is, and that is just the sketchiest, dumbest, um, you know, hack, uh, bullshit art form. Um, and I'm not talking about real wizards who have magic, by the way. We're obviously a very pro-wizard show. Uh, I, I mean, if you don't know that by now, 
I won't shut the fuck up about wizards. Magicians, though, I, uh, I'll be honest, when I open for a magician, which happens sometimes because some of the clubs around here, literally, they think it's funny to book me to open for whatever fucking MAGA guys in town, uh, uh, magicians, cruise ship comedians, fucking, I opened for a guy recently who, uh, his credit was like, as seen on Huckabee. And of course, these old fucking white guys, um, who are like, whatever, their whole premise is like, fucking people are too fucking sensitive nowadays, or whatever. <clears throat> They're always, it's always the same comic whose uh, headshot looks a good 40 years before um, the present time, their present age. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that makes sense. Make a gr- America Great Again people have fond memories um, that are just incorrect. And wh- I mean, whatever. Yeah, they grew up in more prosperous times. Um, but guess what happened? Ronald Reagan happened, you old fucking boomers. Uh, and you still think that he was a good guy. Um, anyways, uh, I should call my parents. Um, Yeah, uh, I think uh, that about does it for Arrested Development. Um, It's hard for me to put into words how much I love that show, uh, but uh, the time has come for us to now discuss the the disappointment that was uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe film. Uh, And I'm going to talk about some things. Uh, I've rewatched it many times. I want to feel the magic. Uh, You can't watch Lord of the Rings every day. Uh, unfortunately I've tried and, um, I like it, but it makes me feel sick eventually. Um, and that's kind of the, the purpose ideally for the lion, the witch and the wardrobe film would be to fill that void. Um, when you've had enough of middle earth, uh, you go into Narnia, um, which I read the books as a kid and uh, my opinions about this, I'm well aware that they're affected because I was raised by evangelical Christians who uh, just kind of force-fed me all this Christian stuff, a, a lot of Christian just bullshit right-wing, like anti-abortion, anti-gay, uh, uh, pro-war on Iraq, Islamophobic um, you know, revisionist history about virtuous slave owners and whatnot— um, I grew up amongst that, uh, in that form of Christianity. Um, the thing is that, you know, Christians don't really distinguish um, between that. They mix that in with good shit. Christians are fully capable of loving Lord of the Rings. Um, uh, they are fully capable, of, of course, of loving uh, the goddamn Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Although, so, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I, I'm i doing things that I hate, uh, but the, things that I hate for complex reasons. Um, and there are good things about the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It's a fun story, in a way. Um, it has the potential to be fun. And of course, before you comment, I realize it's a story for children. Um, you know, uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is not really intended to consume your entire life like Lord of the Rings is. Uh, Lord of the Rings is a place to get lost forever. There is no turning back. After you're in the Silmarillion, there is no turning back. You must learn the names uh, the various races of Middle Earth. You must know the lore. You've got to get into the um, fan art, basically. Which I mean, the fan art. I say that I, that's what I call the Prime series because they took a very loose uh, storyline and mi- kind of did their own thing with it, and I love it. Uh, but it's basically fan art. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, it has that power. Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, uh, the books don't, I, I don't see them as having that potential, and that makes sense because uh, C.S. Lewis was opposite of Tolkien in that C.S. Lewis wrote uh, 
many different types of genres. Um, it was not just the Narnia for him, whereas Tolkien lost himself, literally lost himself. His entire writing career became uh, uh, delving out all these chasms of uh, Middle Earth history. He just made it his whole thing, and I respect it and thank God for him. But C.S. Lewis was more impulsive. Um, you know, he would crank out writing and uh, send it to the editor much quicker than uh, his friend Tolkien. Um, so uh, I would say that the, the film, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, um, it came out after Lord of the Rings had run its course um, and before the Hobbit movies had disappointed everyone as well. Um, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe comes out, and uh, it's done by Disney. And um, it was kind of, um, I don't know, I feel like Disney has gotten much better at uh, Disneyifying things. You know, they've had experience with that through the Marvel franchise, which I think is uh, the work of the absolute devil, um, the Avengers anyway. But I digress. Uh, you know, <clears throat> um, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe film, though, is so... Uh, it's just so tame. It's so... Uh, it's kind of the opposite of the problem with The Hobbit. The Hobbit, they tried to make all epically epic or whatever, and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is just kind of pussy bullshit. It's just... Um, there's nothing remotely scary in it. Um, the witch is, uh, played by Tilda Swinton, uh, in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is interesting because I distinctly remember when I was a kid reading Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, uh, I remember hearing about the witch and reading about her and she entices, uh, Edmund, um, and that's kind of how they get in the predicament. But I remember thinking, like, this witch is the hottest woman I've ever uh, read about. Um, she entices Edmund with uh, Turkish delight. It's very, like, there's fucking sexual undertones to it, and it's creepy uh, in hindsight uh, a little bit. But it's a good part of the story. And uh, it's interesting, though. I was thinking about this. They got Tilda Swinton, who is a phenomenal actress. Uh, cannot stress that enough. But she is many things, but she is not a... I, I don't know why I'm talking about her like Trump trying to insult someone. But she uh, she is not a sex icon. Um, she's the opposite. You know, she... Uh, um, she has a very distinctive look, but it, let's face it, it is not a traditional, that, that is not, uh, I don't even know who people fawn over anymore. Um, for me, there's only, like, celebrity-wise, like, uh, I don't even know. I like Stevie Nicks, and I know people are like, she's 90 years old, and that's true, but I would still... I Stevie Nicks, I would marry on the spot. Um, anyways, uh, they got Tilda Swinton, and it's interesting. I feel like they uh, they chose Tilda Swinton um, because she's not sexy, because that would be weird having Edmund being seduced. Maybe they chose Tilda Swinton because otherwise, like if it was a hot witch, it'd be fucking weird. So maybe good call on them. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Also, uh, the I don't know. You know, I don't know when the last time you watched the movie is uh, was, but they chose the most like annoying, like kind of just brat, like rich British kids to play um, the characters in it at just these little demons. Um, I, uh, I, 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 there's a line from it where uh, little Lucy. Uh, who is the youngest in the family, she's complaining, and she just, she says, sheets, the sheets are scratchy. And uh, I I say that all the time. I quote that with my friend Maddie all the time, my girlfriend, whatever, uh, Maddie. Uh, 
you know, I, uh, we say sheets are scratchy and it's, it's just like such an annoying, their little voices are so annoying that I don't think that those kids, they're so annoying that the children in the lion, the witch and the wardrobe film are so annoying that I don't think they've been rivaled uh, or they were ever rivaled until that little fucking bastard kid in the Babadook. Oh my God. Or, uh, you know, another, uh, you know, high in the runnings for most annoying children in film, uh, the kids from Jurassic Park, that little boy from Jurassic Park. I, you just watch that now and you're like, why didn't they just have him get eaten? That would make it a better movie. And I didn't think that was possible, but, um, yeah, the fucking, oh, those children. Kids in movies are kind of annoying. Let's get rid of them. No more kids in movies. I'm done with that. The Lord of the Rings doesn't have any fucking kids in it, really. There's Hobbit children, but, I mean, why do we need that? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know what? I, um, I think you get the point. Uh... I don't care for the... I definitely... Here's where I'm at. I definitely do not care f at all for that film. Um, I find it annoying. And uh, it has James McAvoy in it. I normally like him, but he just seems like kind of insufferable as Mr. Tumnus. I'm just not into The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I don't know if anyone really is. Um, but they justified making several of those movies, I believe. Um, all right, guys, I, uh, you know, I'm doing this for my, my aim is pure. You know that I'm doing the Lord's work and that is talking about important issues while we have a genocide going on. I, I find it important, um, to talk about the lion, the witch and the wardrobe from 2000 fucking five or whatever. Um, God. All right. I'm signing off until next week. Uh, I appreciate you, comrades, your support. Please uh, tell others about this. Uh, we we need to grow this thing of ours. Um, your boy needs uh, more followers um, uh, to pay his bills. You know, it's inflation. We gotta we gotta do something about this. Help out Tyler, a uh, a, a single dad. You know. Black Magic TV. Um, all right, I'll uh, I'll see you all next week. Thanks for hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.